Nikki Haley has been labeled the queen of Washington, D.C. swamp. All states are unwinding the illegal removal of Donald Trump from the presidential ballot. Joe Biden reacts by saying he always planned to beat Donald Trump at the voting box, so he's not really bothered all these lawsuits he secretly pushed aren't working out. A big announcement from Michelle Obama that will have many people cheering. Plus, Democrat Representative Jamie Raskins has a new plan up his sleeve to get Donald Trump off all ballots once and for all. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out because it tells YouTube to push this out to more and more people. So by giving this a like, you're helping push the truth out to more people. I want to thank Body Boost for sponsoring this live. Coach Brian has an incredible offer to help you lose 20 pounds in six weeks. I'm already down 15, and I'll tell you more later. Following Trump's historic win in the Supreme Court, Colorado's Secretary of State Jenna Griswold is furious. During an interview on MSNBC News, Griswold stated, I do believe that states should be able, under our Constitution, to bar oath-breaking insurrectionists, and ultimately this decision leaves open the door for Congress to act, to pass authorizing legislation, but we know that Congress is nearly a non-functioning body, so ultimately, ultimately it will be up to American voters to save democracy in November. Wait. She's actually going to let the American people decide? What a horrible thing. <laughs> All right. Now, I know there was some sarcasm there, but uh, the answer is always to let the American people vote for whom they want. Now, I know that sounds totally crazy to Democrats that think they know better than the rest of us, but she's just going to have to sit back and let you and me vote for whom we really want whether that's Biden or Donald Trump or RFK Jr. Now, let me know in the comments on the side, who do you plan to vote for? Biden, Trump, or RFK Jr.? I want to hear from you. But Colorado wasn't the only state that was forced to withdraw from this illegal and unconstitutional standpoint. Maine Secretary of State Shayna Bellows backtracked after the Supreme Court issued their ruling. She stated, the United States Supreme Court has ruled that individual states lack authority to enforce Section 3 of the 14th Amendment with respect to federal offices. Consistent with my oath and obligation to follow the law and the Constitution and pursuant to the Anderson decision, I hereby withdraw my determination that Mr. Donald Trump's primary petition is invalid. Oh, I'm sure she hated saying those words, but that's the law. The Biden campaign also reacted to the Supreme Court decision finally, claiming that it doesn't matter because they've always planned to beat Donald Trump at the ballot box anyway. During an interview with MSNBC, Biden's deputy campaign manager, Quentin Folk, stated, We don't really care. It's not been the way we've planned to beat Donald Trump. Our focus since day one of launching this campaign has been to defeat Donald Trump at the ballot box. <laughs> Such liars. But do you think this is true? Has Biden really been running a fair campaign this whole time? While the Biden administration may not have been involved in Colorado's case directly, mounting evidence suggests that they are directly involved in the Georgia case to get Donald Trump thrown in jail. Not only did District Attorney Fonnie Willis's prosecutor, Nate Wade, meet with the Biden White House legal team before having permission to charge Donald Trump, her deputy district attorney has a business partner with direct ties to the Biden campaign. So we know that they are directly involved in Georgia, and we know that they're directly involved, indirectly involved, excuse me, in the state of Colorado. Now, former President Donald Trump reacted to this new insight by stating, I'm being prosecuted by Biden, my opponent, whether it's Fannie Willis or Alvin Bragg. These are local and state. 
They're in total coordination with the White House. You can't do that. It shouldn't be done. So Trump is calling this out for what it really is, a coordinated attempt with the federal and local government to get Donald Trump. Now, I think Biden is full of crap, and this just proved it. He says, I wasn't trying to get Donald Trump kicked off. I wasn't trying to get him fined $500 million, jailed for 700 years. I didn't help rig a jury in the state of Florida. And I wasn't saying he interfered in the election. I'm planning to beat him at the ballot box. I mean, give me a break. If you think Biden is a liar, please type liar in the comment section. And if you think he's telling the truth, I want you to type truth teller. I love seeing the comments from you guys. So please let me know your true thoughts down below. All right. Now, yesterday I reported that Nikki Haley celebrated her first and only win over Donald Trump in Washington, D.C. Donald Trump reacted by calling Nikki Haley a bird brain, claiming that she wasted a ton of people's money and time by campaigning in the D.C. swamp. Trump's campaign press secretary, Carolyn Levitt, continued the criticism by stating, while Nikki has been soundly rejected throughout the rest of America, she's just been crowned the queen of the swamp by the lobbyists and D.C. insiders that want to protect the failed status quo. What do you think of that? Do you think that this is really Nikki Haley being crowned the queen of the Washington, D.C. swamp? Because so far, she hasn't been able to beat Donald Trump anywhere else. Now, although Nikki Haley and Donald Trump have their differences, Nikki Haley did claim she was very happy that the Supreme Court decided to keep Donald Trump on the ballot. During an interview with CNN News, Haley stated, we don't want the chaos of certain states or secretaries of states saying that they like someone or don't like someone and want to take them off the ballot. I trust the American people. While I'm not the biggest fan of Nikki Haley right now, I do respect the fact that she wanted Donald Trump back on the ballot. It's the right thing to do. Now, as the reality of a second Donald Trump term sets in, Democrats are starting to worry that they are stuck with Joseph Robinette Biden. In response to such rumors, former First Lady Michelle Obama has been forced to deny that she will run for president. Ms. Obama's Director of Communications, Crystal Carson, stated, As former First Lady Michelle Obama has expressed several times over the years, she will not be running for president. Ms. Obama supports President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris's re-election campaign. Now, remember yesterday, I told you guys this. She has said over and over again, I don't want to run for president. I'm shy. I'm introverted. I'm dealing with health issues. She's been very, very upfront. And now she's come out again and said, I am not running for president. But boy, does this leave the door open for Hillary Rodham Clinton. I kind of wonder, you guys think the Obamas are a little bit butthurt that Joe and Kamala hired the Clintons to help them win the next election instead of them? I don't know. Maybe it's because the Clintons just have that killer instinct. <laughs> All right, now I have a couple of huge updates, but first, 35 seconds from today's sponsor. Do you want to lose 20 pounds in the next six weeks? Do you want to keep your New Year's resolution of losing weight, being healthier, and feeling better? Do you want to sleep better, feel better, and think better? Then you need a coach that can show you how to lose 20 pounds in the next six weeks. I'm personally down 15 pounds already. I consider the system to be easy and intuitive. Now, I'm going to leave a link down below so that you can learn about losing 20 pounds in six weeks so that you can feel better. Uh, I'll leave that link down below. Now, make sure to mention the Stephen Gardner special because I spent several weeks on your behalf organizing an incredible deal. I'll leave that link down below. Now, the facts can't be ignored. It looks like Democrats are stuck with Joe Biden. The question remains, will the hate of Donald Trump be enough 
to keep Biden and Harris in the White House. Now, billionaire Mark Cuban joined this conversation by stating, if they were having their last wake, if it was him versus Trump, if he was being given his last Catholic rights, I would still vote for Joe Biden. Now, this may be easy for him to say, but I think most Americans that are struggling with the rising cost of living, this ridiculous inflation, I don't think they would have the same response as billionaire Mark Cuban. Most people know that inflation and Bidenomics are hurting their wallets and elections are almost always voted and based on kitchen table issues. Well, living in America and how expensive it's become is a big issue. Not to mention the fact, look how much of our hard-earned taxpayer money is just given away to foreign nations and illegal immigrants. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Okay, now listen to this, and I want to hear from you guys, okay? Democrat Representative Jamie Raskins of Maryland says he has a secret ace up his sleeve. He has a plan to remove Donald Trump from all ballots once and for all. He said the Supreme Court may have ruled nine to zero in Trump's favor, but, but five of the nine said only Congress can draft a bill to remove Donald Trump. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Jamie Raskin said, we got Trump impeached twice. We can put together a new House bill where Congress deems Donald Trump an insurrectionist and get him removed from all 50 state ballots once and for all. He said, we will get this done, and we will convince 10 Republicans in the Senate to join us in removing Donald Trump from the ballots once and for all. Now, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about Jamie Raskin's sneaky ace-up-the-sleeve plan to get Donald Trump removed once and for all? I don't think it's going to happen. But I do believe that he's going to waste a bunch of our taxpayer money trying to get Donald Trump for, what is this, like the 10th time? But who knows? I guess we'll see how this thing goes. I personally am not a fan of Jamie Raskins. I've watched him lie over and over and over again in congressional hearings. And so I think he's full of it, but we'll see. Thank you guys for liking this video. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that, the comments are going so quickly. Thank you guys so much for being so supportive of the channel. All right, now listen to this. California lawmakers have just proposed a new law that would give illegal immigrants a free 20% down payment for their home. So if their down payment is, or excuse me, if their house is $500,000, the government's going to give them $100,000 of free money. Now, they would pay no interest to the government the entire time they live in this home. But when they sell that house, they have to give that $100,000 of free money back to the government. Now, if it's a million dollar house, because this is a California law, they would get $200,000 of free money. They would pay no interest on $200,000 of free money. But when they sell the house down the road, they give that $200,000 back. Now, I'm sure inflation won't continue to rise on that money. And I'm sure taxpayers who don't get the same benefit won't be jealous. And I'm sure the black community who wanted reparations out in California, they won't be mad that they're going to be uh, now losing out on helping their families so that illegal immigrants can get $100,000, dollars $300,000 in free money. You guys can look this up. I'm not making this up, but let me know what you think. I, I, I would be pretty upset. Buying a house is expensive enough already thanks to how little housing is being built and how expensive it is to live in America but nobody's giving me a down payment. Nobody's giving you a down payment. You have to be an illegal immigrant that broke into the United States of America in order to get that free taxpayer money. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, now France has made women's access to abortion 
a part of their country's constitution. Democrats here in the United States are losing their minds over wanting the right to kill their babies as much as French women. Now, I only read about half a dozen left-leaning media articles last night, and in those articles, they were shaming Republicans while getting women on the left all angry that they don't get the right to abort their babies. But none of those articles mentioned that the abortion limit in France is 14 weeks, which is still less time than what Democrats get here in the United States in the states where it is legal. There are some states in the United States where you can literally kill a baby up till nine months in the womb if you decide you don't want it. Over in France, they, they have to do it by the 14th week. And the majority of those that do have abortion, it's within a week of having unprotected relations with somebody using the morning after pill. It's not 14 week abortions where there's already a heartbeat like here in the United States. Now, again, Democrats are losing their mind. Why does France get to do this and not the United States? But it, it's only up to 14 weeks. Senator Bob Menendez, you know, the Democrat senator that had $400,000 in cash and hundreds of thousands of dollars in gold bars just sitting in his closet from alleged bribes, has now been indicted for a third time for willfully obstructing justice and not handing over evidence that proves he's completely guilty. I don't know. Uh, to me, this just makes him look even more guilty, but what do I know? All right, Under Secretary of State Victoria Nuland, the woman who organized the coup in Ukraine on behalf of President Obama and pushed for the war that we're seeing of Russia and Ukraine, has decided, mm, I'm done interfering in other governments and causing hundreds of thousands of people to die. I'm going to go ahead and retire. She's ready to get that sweet government pension and relax on the beach, sipping Mai Tais and pina coladas. Well, former Trump advisor Steve Bannon has announced on his podcast for her to hold her documents and lawyer up because once he's back in White House with Trump, he's coming after Victoria Nuland for war crimes. Yikes. Former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has just been subpoenaed to testify before Congress about why he put so many schmovid sick patients in nursing homes. This resulted in over 15,000 deaths and sparked schmovid hysteria in the state of New York when actually there wasn't as big of an issue as we originally thought, but because this governor had this brilliant idea to put sick people with old people, over 15,000 New York seniors died, sparking all of the fear that led to the lockdowns in the pandemic era. Okay, now Kamala Harris, she's been working towards a ceasefire in Gaza. She just did the unthinkable. She has gone behind Benjamin Netanyahu's back to try to schedule a meeting with Benny Gantz, a former general and high-ranking Israeli politician. According to the Associated Press, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is furious at the United States and did not grant Gantz permission to secretly meet with Kamala Harris. So, although I don't agree with everything that Israel is doing, this is the United States arrogance trying to go behind Netanyahu's back and cause chaos and disruption in Israel. So we'll see what the, uh, the backlash is on Vice President Kamala Harris. All right, now this is my update for today. Thank you guys so much. Please give this video a like. Hit that subscribe button. We want to get to 1.6 million amazing truth seekers just like you guys here today. Thank you so much. I love you. Make sure to check out that link down below for Body Boost with Brian so that you can lose 20 pounds in six weeks. And make sure to ask about the Stephen Gardner special. Hey, thanks so much. I love you guys. Have a great rest of your evening.